Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna show you how to install belt conveyor idlers, and helping me out is Steve Cook. He is with Martin Sprocket and Gear. Welcome, Steve. Hi, Tom, thanks for having me. Great to have you here. I, I love all the big equipment on my demo table right here, so tell me where you'd like to start. Tom, we always want to make sure that we follow the correct installation process, and whether you're installing SEMA B, SEMA C, SEMA D, or SEMA E idlers, the process remains the same. Misaligned idlers may cause belt tracking problems or lead to increased shell wear on the rollers and premature wear on the bottom cover of the belt. All right, now before we start though, and before you start any project, you should also make sure that you wear the proper PPE or the appropriate PPE. We've got gloves and we've got glasses, but that's not the only thing because if this was actually hooked up, you know as well as I do, we'd want to de-energize our source that we have here so it would be safe. So we do the proper lockout tag out procedures to make sure we have zero energy coming into anything here on our conveyor belt. All right, Steve, take it away. Okay, we verified that we have the correct SEMA series and roll diameter on the new idler that we're installing. The center roll height variance on conveyor idlers should be no more than the quarter inch tolerance allowed by SEMA. All right, yeah, I think we're good there. Rotate all of the rollers to ensure that they turn freely and are free of any damage or interferences. Depending on the belt tension, you may need to loosen the belt on the take-up frames if it's a manual system or raise the counterweight if it's a gravity take-up system. This is best done by two maintenance people on either side of the conveyor. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Makes it a lot easier. Remove the bolts from the conveyor idler being replaced and tip it forward. Lay it down and slide it out one side. Inspect the conveyor for damage and clean it if there's any debris. Now ensure that all three rollers are securely locked into the idler frame and then slide the new idler under the belt. So our belt is here, and we've literally taken out that new, that old idler right there, and we have slid the new one under the belt. Lift the idler into the upright position and align with the existing bolt holes. All right, and these are the holes we're talking about right here. Correct. Correct. Okay. Loosely install the first nut, bolt, and flat washer into the hole closest to the head pulley on both sides of the idler. All right, we're good there. What's up next, Steve? Next, we measure from one side of the idler to the previous idler. All right. Now, we did this earlier, and we had around 48 inches from center to center. What do you got there? Correct, still there? 48 inches. Okay. Run a string down the center of the conveyor or use a laser alignment technology to establish the center line of the conveyor. Now, we check to make sure the angle iron on the idler frame is perpendicular to the conveyor stringers and the conveyor center line. Looks like we got a couple of 90-degree angles right there. Now, we install the second bolt on each side and tighten all four nuts. All right. So, we got those tight. It feels tight. We're all good. What do we do then? It's important to note that the process is the exact same for training idlers. However, the center roll should sit a little proud compared to conventional idlers. This increased height will lead to a higher load on the idler. However, it assists in the tracking ability of the training idler. They should be installed so that the belt contacts the guide roller first. And of course, if the belt's misaligned, it allows the top of the assembly to pivot and then correct that misaligned belt. Correct, Tom. Adjust the guide rollers and the guide roller brackets so that the belt is only contacting the guide rollers when it's misaligned. When the belt does contact the guide rollers, it should be contacting them in the center of the roller. Okay, now all we have to do is tension the belt back to the required amount, and then we should be good to go. Correct again, Tom. If possible, run the conveyor belt empty and check belt tracking before loading any material. Yeah, but what about the return idlers? Many of the same steps should be taken when installing single flat return rolls with drop brackets. And there's a reason I said that. I just happen to have one down here. Ah. That's right, Tom. The procedure is the same if the rollers are steel return or self-cleaning rubber disc return rollers. Correct return roll alignment is just as critical as the troughing idler alignment for belt conveyors. Gotcha. And we still want to make sure everything is locked out when we do this. So we're not turning any power on. We want to make sure that everything is shut off. Exactly. First, we remove the old roller and the drop brackets. Yeah, I think they're off. I think we're good to go. Now, loosely install both drop brackets to the conveyor structure using nuts, bolts, and conveyor washers. Install the roller into the drop brackets. The slot in the roller shaft should drop securely into the keyhole slot in the drop brackets. Yeah, that went right in. Now secure the roller into the drop brackets using the supplied teardrop clips and self-tapping screws. Measure both sides from the previous drop brackets to ensure the roller is perpendicular to the conveyor stringers. Yeah, I mean they're perpendicular and then we would tighten everything up, right? Absolutely. Tighten them to ensure the brackets won't move as the belt moves. And the same steps should be followed for the return training idlers as well. Absolutely, Tom. Ensure that the assembly is mounted in the correct direction so the belt is contacting the guide rollers prior to the return roll. Then adjust the guide rollers, the same as on a trough training idler, so the belt only contacts the guide rollers when a training action is required. Okay, so once that's done, we have that done, we have that done, then all we have to do is inspect it and we should be good to go. That's it. Also, any safety guarding that was removed should be secured back in place before operation of the conveyor. Now we're done. 
Great information. Steve, thank you so much for coming in today. I really do appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. That was Steve Cook. He is with Martin Sprocket and Gear. And if you have any questions about anything you saw, you can contact Motion Industries. They'll help you out. And you know what you can also do? You can also go to mihowto.com and check out a whole bunch of great videos that are similar to this one on all different kinds of subjects. Thanks for watching today. I'm Tom Clark, your host.